So for coming up with keywords that you can use to enrich your website or your page, I recommend using keyword research to find these tools, but you absolutely don't have to, honestly. If you're trying to enrich existing pages or you already know your customers or your visitors really well, or you've done research on Facebook, then you don't need to do keyword research. But if you are just starting out and you really don't know what possible tools you could create, then I recommend doing some form of keyword research. And it can be as simple as industry calculator. So for example, I'm using Scrapebox. This is not a well-known tool for beginners. There are many keyword research tools out there. I will definitely put some links in the description for some, um, but Scrapebox I've been using for a long time. So I'm just going to try and scrape a bunch of different keywords. So if you have no idea what kinds of calculators your industry are looking for or using, then you can do something called a wildcard search. So that's just an asterisk and the term that you're looking for, so calculator. You could put industry calculator, but I'm gonna put asterisk calculator, and the asterisk is going to fill in the keyword in the beginning. So it could be real estate calculator, fitness calculator. So the asterisk at the beginning, it replaces that missing word. Likewise, calculator, asterisk, the asterisk at the end does the same thing. So calculator for asterisk. Uh, that's enough because I don't have an industry I'm trying to scrape keywords for, but I'm just gonna go and scrape now. And here it's giving me the different sources. So we've got Google Suggest and Bing Suggest. These are the ones I use, but as you can see, you've got YouTube suggestions. Yahoo, all kinds of things. Again, I, I could do a whole video on Scrapebox, but this is not the aim of the video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get the list from Maine. And now we are going to do a multi-level search. So as you can see, we've got two very broad keywords because they could be anything. And I'm gonna do three levels deep and hit start. And this is where it's showing me all the keywords it's found. It should be a relatively quick search. We're still on level one, however. Maybe I should have done two because these could be anything. It's gonna give me so many keywords. I'm just gonna stop it here because it's gonna go on for a while. Now, this is the list here. We've got 2,579 unique keywords. Now, don't be fooled. All of these are not going to be good keywords. Some of these are gonna be amazing. Ideally, what you want to do after getting this list is cleanse it in something like Keywords Everywhere, which is what I've got up here. And you can put bulk keyword data in. So I'm gonna do that for the purpose of this video. Um, but I'm also gonna show you how you can do this in ChatGPT if you don't really care about search volume. So this method is to find the search volume. I'm gonna transfer it to the left side and then I'm going to export these to Scrapebox. So I've just got them on the side here. I'm gonna copy these and now I'm gonna put them in keywords everywhere. And this is gonna find the search volume. So it will let me know what keywords are duds and what ones are worth doing. Again, if the main focus is SEO, then definitely check the search volume before you go creating calculators. Again, some of these are not going to be great. We've got BMA, BMI calculator, calculation, um, calculator for percentages, calculator for compound interest, huge search volume. Um, and as we keep going, we can start to find some really good calculators. But of course, your search should be tailored towards calculators in your industry. You've got Workday, Hour Calculator, Mortgage Calculator, UK. 
all kinds of calculators. Now in ChatGPT, you could just tell it your industry and what you want to do, and it's going to give you that. The only thing is it's not going to give you accurate search volume. So again, if that matters, you definitely want to do keyword research for this. But I can say, come up with 20 tools, uh, let's say single use tools, so they don't come up with tools that people need to sign in for. <laughs> single use tools I can create for my next JS or whichever framework you're using website for investing. See, this gives you all the tool ideas. It just doesn't give you keywords, but some of these are keywords. Crypto ROI tracker, uh, inflation impact simulator, not so much. Real estate investment calculator, definitely a, a search term. Um, day trading, profit loss calculator, definitely a search term. So that's how you come up with very industry specific calculator ideas but again these are not keyword backed you can go and research these individually uh, or ask ChatGPT to give an approximate search volume value but again probably not necessary so if you're using something like lovable.dev or bolt.new you can get it to build these tools relatively easily but if you already have a wordpress site or a webflow site or a wix site or any other platform then you can use something like Grok Labs App Gen, or you can use Web Dev Arena. So I'm going to just take this text for compound interest calculator, and looks like Claude 3.5 Sonnet is still in the lead. I'm going to give it this and let it create the tool. And there you have it, just like that. This one's still generating, but just like that, you have a compound interest calculator. Uh, let's just check if it works. I mean, well, it's showing us that it works. Let's uh, change it. There we go, looks like it works. And you can tell it to go into more depth. That one is still generating we can tell it to make it even more impressive and tell it to change the styling and all of those things. Let's see what this one comes up with. With a button, I think that's always better. So let's uh, put the same values in. Okay, monthly contributions, different. There we go, lovely. So just like that, you've done your research, you found keywords or found concepts to create calculators to enrich your pages, to get SEO traffic, and you've created the apps that do this. For these React ones, you would need to host this somewhere like Netlify or on your own domain. And for the HTML and JavaScript ones, you can paste them in a code block on your website as they are. You don't have to do anything else, but it's probably not going to look as good as some of these React ones. If you found this video useful, don't forget to drop a like, comment and subscribe for more just like this.